So unit seven is exponential and logarithmic functions, and 7.1 is exponential functions and their equations. That's found on pages 436 to 453 in your text, and that's covering the first two topics of this unit. Our curriculum objective, to demonstrate understanding of the representation and analysis of data using polynomial functions of degree less than or equal to three, which is what we just did last unit. And today is uh, talking about, or tomorrow is talking about logarithmic functions, exponential functions is today, and sinusoidal functions. So our lesson objectives, Number one, to be able to identify an exponential function just by looking at it. And number two, to be able to state some characteristics of an exponential function by looking at both the graph of the function and the equation of the function. So an exponential function is a function that has the variable x as your exponent. And these types of functions are written in the following way. y equals a times b to the x. So a is the leading coefficient and b is the base of the function. So please remember that this does not occur. We cannot just multiply this a and this b together and call that a, b to the power of x because our bed mass rules say that we have to do exponents before we do multiplying. So don't multiply these two numbers together ever. It's a really bad idea. So like we did with polynomial functions last unit, we're gonna take a look at the following characteristics of exponential functions by looking at the graphs of a couple exponential functions. We're gonna find the number of x-intercepts, the y-intercept, the end behavior, the domain and the range, and we're gonna be able to tell whether this function is increasing or decreasing. So we're looking at desmos.com here, and we are looking at the graph of an exponential function, and the exponential function I chose is four to the power of x. And you can see that this function happens to be increasing all the way from left to right, now there happens to be a sharp increase after it hits this, this uh, y-axis, but it still is increasing. There doesn't appear to be any x-intercepts. There's nowhere along this red line will you get an x-intercept, so it won't cross that, that uh, the x-axis. Um, in terms of, why is this thing not moving now? All right, in terms of a y-intercept, um, it happens to be at zero comma one. And remember to find your y-intercept, you just let x equal zero. So if I let x equal zero, I get four to the power of zero, and anything raised to the power of zero is one. Um, the domain, it's everything from left to right because this function keeps on going. So that would be x e r, and in terms of the range, we've got uh, everything greater than the x-axis. So that would just be y is greater than or equal to, not equal to zero, but just y is greater than zero. Now let's take a look at what happens when I, oh, and starting in end function, sorry, it end, starts in quadrant two, and it ends in quadrant one. So if I start putting a number in front of four to the power of x, so this next graph is two times four to the power of x, the only thing that's changed really is that it becomes, it looks like it's become a little more steeper, but that just changes the y-intercept. So when I put a two in front, the y-intercept is two. The next function is what if I put a five in front, that just changes the y-intercept to five. And the reason is if I let x equal zero, I get four to the power of zero, which is just one, and five times one is just five. Okay, so if I multiply by a half, then that just happens to make my y-intercept a half instead. So what happens then if I change the base? So the base was four to the power of x. If I change the base to something like um, three to the power of x, it still looks like the same sort of function. It just changes like the, the steepness of it. But what if I change that base into a fraction? So if I change that base to a fraction like a quarter, now that graph is kind of flipped around. Now it's a decreasing function. So from left to right, it's getting smaller. Still starts in two and ends in one. Still has the same domain, still has the same range, still find the y-intercept the same way, but it is now a decreasing function. So if the base is a fraction and a fraction between zero and one, that's when we get a decreasing function. If I multiply that thing by three, it just moves that y-intercept up to the three again. If I multiply that whole thing by a third, it just changes that y-intercept and makes it a third instead. So it's the base of the function that determines whether it's increasing or decreasing. Other than that, a lot of the characteristics just remain the same. So predict the number of x-intercepts, the y-intercept, the end behavior, the domain and range, and whether the functions are increasing or decreasing. So f of x equals two times f to the, or five to the power of x, sorry. Number of x-intercepts, there are none because uh, there it is an exponential function and exponential functions don't cross that x-axis the y-intercept is when x equals zero and so if x equals zero y is just equal to two so our y-intercept is zero comma two the end behavior where well it starts in quadrant two and it ends in quadrant one because by now you need to know that exponential functions either look like this or they look the other way um, the domain and range, if this is the look of this function, the domain is x e r because it goes forever from left to right. 
and the range is everything greater than zero and y e r. And is it increasing or decreasing? Well, from left to right, this thing is increasing. So the other function, f of x equals 8 times 3 quarters x, it also has no x-intercepts. The y-intercept, though, is going to be at 8, because if we let x equal 0, 3 quarters is raised to the power of 0, which is just 1. So we get 0, comma 8. It also starts in 2 and ends in 1. It just looks a little bit different because this function decreases from left to right. Um, domain still the same, x, e, r. The range is still the same, y is greater than 0, y, e, r. But instead of it being an increasing function, this is a decreasing function. So you really just need to know the two basic shapes. And what makes these shapes is their base. A base greater than 1 means it's increasing. A base that's less than 1 but greater than 0 makes that a decreasing function. So in summary, Exponential functions can either have a base that is greater than 1 or a base that is between 0 and 1. So that's just a fraction between 0 and 1. And focusing on the base will allow you to find the following characteristics of an exponential function. Number of x-intercepts, the y-intercept, and behavior, domain and range, and whether it increases or decreases. So your assignment is on pages 448 to 453. Good luck, and we'll see you in class.